In the previous episode, I showed you how to create a user activity feed like the one you might find here on GitHub using the public activity gem. As with any gem, it's great if it fits your needs exactly, but if it doesn't, you may want to consider creating the functionality from scratch, which is what I want to show you in this episode. Fortunately, it's not too difficult to make an activity feed from scratch, but it does present some interesting problems, and in this episode I'd like to walk you through some of my thought process on how I decide how to implement this kind of thing. I'll be working with the same example application as last time where I have a list of recipes and users can add new recipes or comment on them. And I would like to track all of this activity and then display it all on a separate page. Now I want to store these activities in the database, so I'll first generate a new resource called activity. So that'll generate both a model and a controller. And I want to keep track of the user that's performing the activity, so let's make this a belongs to association. And I also want to keep track of the action that is performing, such as create, update, or destroy, and the object is performing it on. And I'll call this trackable, like the public activity gem does. Now I want this to be a polymorphic association so that it can belong to either a comment or a recipe. And in Rails 4 generator, you'll be able to do belongs to polymorphic like this. However, since we're not there, let me just add a trackable type column. And then I'll run the migrations to create that activities table. Next, I need to do some quick cleanup here on the generated activity model. I need to make this trackable association polymorphic. And then I also want to set up the adder accessible so that we can set the trackable object when we create the activity. And I don't want to forget to set up the other side of this it belongs to user association. So in my user model here, I'm going to add a has many activities so we can reference the user's activities uh, through that association. All right, pretty standard stuff so far, but the big question is how do we create these activity records whenever the user performs an action on our site? For example, if they uh, create a new recipe record, then we want to add an activity for that. So one option is through callbacks. So we could add an after create callback on here that creates a new activity and then sets the action as create and sets the trackable object as that recipe record. Now more and more lately, I have been shying away from using active record callbacks like this. I do think they have their use cases, but it's important to be aware of the potential issues. One thing I don't like is that it makes it less obvious what exactly is happening in a controller action. Our recipes controller create action is going to trigger that callback, but from this point of view, we don't know that it's creating an activity record. It looks like we're only saving the recipe to the database. I like my controller actions to be more obvious on what is going on. I find that easier to read the code and debug it. Another issue with callbacks is that they often cause unintended side effects. There are other times that you might create a record outside of a user re request, such as in a rake task or a console, or uh, maybe seeding the database or in a test suite. Do you really want that callback to be triggered every time that happens? Another question I like to ask myself when deciding if I should use a callback or not is, what if this callback happened to be triggered twice in one request? Would that have any unwanted effects? In this case, it would create two activity records, which is certainly not what I want. The question is more relevant to an update record callback, but I think it's a good question to ask either way. Now, another sign that this doesn't belong in a callback is that we can't easily reference the current user of the request, which is something we want to track on our activity. So there's a lot going up against using callbacks for recording activity behavior, so I'm not going to use it in this case. Instead, I'm just going to track the activity from the controller. So when we create a new recipe, I'm just going to create an activity like we did before, but now we can just go through the current user activities association when we create it. Now this is something I'll probably be doing a lot throughout the application, so let's move this into a method called uh, track activity, and then pass in the recipe object. And then in the uh, application controller, I can define that track activity method, and that'll take that trackable object. And that way, I can use the uh, controller action as a default here. Now, if I run into any cases where I don't want this behavior, I could easily move this into a second argument that's optional. By the way, this works because Ruby evaluates argument defaults within the context of the method. Uh, if you don't find that to be clear though, you might wanna just set this to nil and then set the default within the method, but either way works. So with this in place, we can easily add activity tracking to any controller action. And it's really not that much work to uh, add it to the create, update, and destroy actions or wherever else you might want it. And we can do the same thing to our comments controller here, just working off of the comment model 
whenever we create or destroy a comet, let's track it. By the way, if you find this makes your controller actions too complex for your liking, uh, the create action is kind of getting close here, uh, you might want to consider refactoring this into a service object like I show in episode 398. All right, with what we've got so far, whenever we perform an action such as create a new comment, then it's going to create an activity uh, through that uh, controller. Next, let's work on making a page that displays these activities in a list. Now we already have the activities controller from the resource generator, so let me define an index action in here where we can fetch the activities, and let's order them by the created at date in descending order. And I'll need to define the template as well. And in here I'll call it activities, and then let's loop through each of the activities. So for each one of these, let's um, wrap it in a div for how about. So that way we uh, can easily add some styling. And then I want to display a link to the user. So that's the activity user, display the name, and go to that user's page. And then I want to describe the activity that was performed, such as a commented on and then the name of the recipe. But this needs to be different depending on each activity. Now we could do this similar to how the public activity gem does, which is pretty clever, and that is to render a separate partial for each type of activity. So it might be under activities slash comment slash create for this given activity. And we can uh, reference this through activity dot trackable type and underscore that, and then have the create be the activity action. And then we just need to pass that activity object into here. So I'll quickly make this partial. We have our activities directory. Let's make a comment one in here and a create.html partial. And here I'll say commented on and then display a link to the recipe, which I can access through activity.trackable because that is going to be the comment record. And we can call recipe on this and then display the name and then a link to that. And one more thing, I need to add the styling. So I'll do that in here, just paste in some CSS. Now we can try this out visiting the activities path will show us that activity rendered out through the partial. And we can easily add other partials to handle the different types of activities. Now what I would really like is if I didn't have to go through activity.trackable in these partials and instead it would be nice if I could reference the comment object directly here. That cleans things up a lot. Now in order to do this I'll need to complicate the partial rendering in this index template which is already getting pretty complex here. And whenever a view gets complex, when I have a lot of ERB tags, that's a sign that I could probably refactor this into a presenter. Now I covered presenters in detail in episode 287, but let me make one quickly here. I'll make a uh, presenters directory, and then I'll make a new file here called activitypresenter.rb. And then I'll make a class with that name, and let's define an initialize method that accepts the activity object and the view context. And actually in this case, I want the presenter to delegate all the extra methods to the view context just so I don't have to go through the view each time. So I'm going to make this a simple delegator and then uh, call super here and pass it the view. By the way, simple delegator is a class provided by the Ruby standard lib. And let me uh, record this activity. And while I'm at it, let's make a reader method for the activity. So what I want this presenter to do is everything here involved in displaying the activity. So let's move this off into the activity presenter. I'll initialize it and pass in the activity and self for the view. Now this is kind of interesting. If we just leave it like this, it's going to output the presenter object through ERB, which will convert it to a string. So we could override the uh, two string method on here and then handle the output however we want it to look in the view. This feels a little bit too uh, fancy to me. I actually prefer to call a method on the presenter just so that it's uh, more obvious what's going on here. So I'm going to say render activity and let's define that method on the presenter here instead of using the two string approach. Now I want this method to uh, do basically the same thing that I did in the view. We have our div for call and let's add a link to the username and this will just append this with a space and the render call like we had uh, in the view. And this render call is pretty complex here. So we want, want to move this off into a method. Let's call it a render partial like that. So I'll define that method, render partial. And this is still pretty complex. So let me uh, 
move this off into a separate method. Let's call it partial path. And this, we want to uh, change this so that it's going to pass in the object that we're tracking as an argument into here. So it'd be like comment is activity.trackable. But to do that, let's move this off into a separate hash first called locals. And while we're at it, let's uh, pass in the presenter object into here too, so that we can reference it in the partial if we want to. And the locals hash is going to uh, set the activity type, which will be comment underscore, and let's convert it to a symbol, and set that to the activity.trackable object. And that way we'll be able to reference uh, that comment through the partial like this instead of using activity.trackable. Reload the page, and that still works, yay! So now we can just create the extra partials for the various other activities, but what if after we do this that we find there's a lot of duplication between them and we'd like to remove some of that duplication? And one way would be to create some kind of fallback partial. So uh, instead of creating a separate partial for each action of recipes, what if I want a single partial called uh, recipe.html.erb and that I want to handle all the recipe activities. It might look something like this where we take the activity action name and let's make it past tense by uh, taking the E off if there is one and setting it to ED and then let's say recipe and then a uh, link to that recipe. So that'll be the recipe name and the recipe. Now currently this will not work because in our presenter we are hard coding the uh, partial path to include the activity action in it but instead we would like sort of a second partial path that we supply here for it to fall back to that doesn't include this action portion. Well, here's how you might do that. Let's define another method called partial paths, plural, and then let's make this an array of uh, different partials that we want to choose from. The highest will be searched first, and then we want a fallback partials. And let's make a third one here that is just activity slash activity, and that'll be sort of a global fallback. And then in our partial path method, we can loop through the partial paths and detect the one where the path has a template that exists. And to do that, we can go through the lookup context on the view and call a template exists on that. And this will uh, accept a path as a first argument. The second argument is an array of prefixes, which we can just pass in nil if we don't want prefixes. And then the third argument is whether it's a partial or not, and we'll say true. And then finally, if uh, no partial is found, let's raise an exception so it's a little easier to debug this case, where we'll say uh, no partial found for activity in, and then we'll output the uh, partial pass like this. Well, I uh, think that's it. So if you ever wanted to make a uh, partial fallback system, you can just do something like this, where the lookup context template exists method is uh, the key part here. Now off camera, I did some uh, activity on the recipes, and they're both rendered by that same partial file. It works. All right, we're pretty much done here. I'll just uh, fix up a couple of things. Uh, one, we have to handle the case where the uh, trackable object might not exist, so let's make sure the recipe exists before we're linking to it. And similar for the comment, uh, let's uh, check if the uh, comment exists. And then if it doesn't, we'll display a little message. Otherwise, uh, let's link to that comment. And I still need to make a destroy action, so that'll just say uh, removed comment. And there we go. Here's what our page now looks like with a variety of different activities. And there are certainly things we could do to improve the look of this, but I think the main functionality is complete. Thanks for watching this episode on how you can add an activity feed from scratch.